Let's pray real quick. God, thank you for this day, and uh, thank you for the word you have for us. Thank you for getting us here safely. And God, we just ask that you speak into our hearts today. Help us to take in a, a new word for the new year. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Happy New Year. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you for everybody who's watching on Facebook. Hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas. Hope uh, everybody was safe last night for New Year's. And, uh, you know, I just want to start out with saying, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the last few weeks, you know, God has been really testing me on these fruits that we've been talking about. And, you know, I've succeeded at some of what... I've succeeded with some of these chances, and, you know, I've dropped the ball with other chances. But through my successes and failures, I've not only improved, but I've seen God being fruitful to me. I've seen God being faithful to me, loving me, being joyful, patient, and giving me peace as well. And God has shown me that he's all of these things for me as well. And whether our response to them or not is up to me. And it just has been helping me to push forward, you know. So I want to challenge you guys with that too. You know, as you go throughout your week, you know, see how God is being all, all these things for you. You know, ask God to show you. See what he's doing in your life. How he's helping you with these fruits. Ask him to inspire you. Ask him to open your eyes to see that he's at work in your lives. And that use that strength to keep pushing forward. And to help you develop more and more fruit for his kingdom. And so like I said, so far we've gone over love, joy, peace, and patience over these last few weeks. Galatians 5:22 to 23 says, "But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things." So the next fruit we're going we're going to go over today is kindness. And what is kindness, though? What does it mean to be kind? Well, this is what Jesus says it is. It's at Matthew twenty two thirty nine says, and the second is like, like it, right? First, Jesus is talking about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul in Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Well, now in verse thirty nine, he says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." Well. What does it look like to love people like yourself, right? Who is your neighbor? Anybody breathing air, of course. Any person that God's put into your life, the people that you see on a day-to-day basis. What does it look like practically to love your neighbor as yourself, to be kind to them? Well, there's a few things that you need to show kindness, and they are grace, mercy, and showing forgiveness. Without these three things, you you can't be kind to others. They are the very three things that God uses in our life to show us kindness. Without these three things, we wouldn't be able to have a relationship with God, and these things are necessary for our relationship with God. They are necessary for our relationships with each other. They they have to be there for us to have good, healthy relationships. Jesus is always showing grace, always giving out mercy, and always open to forgive us. He understands that we need these things because we're not perfect people. Jesus realizes that we're not perfect people. Now, that doesn't mean we should just go and sin, but he understands that we need forgiveness and that's why he died for us. And if and if we can under, if Jesus can understand that we're not perfect, he would want us to do the same for others, right? He would want us to love other people 
as we love ourselves, right? Because we want to receive God's grace, and we want God's mercy, and we want God to forgive us always, always. And he always does. He's always looking to bring us back to himself, to have a close relationship with him. And so we have to remember, if we want that from God, we should be open like that with others. Being willing to forgive, show grace, show mercy, right? We have to remember that even if you say you're a Christian or even if you go to church, doesn't mean you're perfect. No, in fact, it, it shows that, hopefully it shows that you realize your need for grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And it doesn't mean that, you know, being kind doesn't mean letting people take advantage of you or letting someone use you as a doormat or enabling somebody. But Jesus talks about what kindness looks like to his disciples. Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35 says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And before this, Jesus had said, you know, if your brother or sister sins against you seven times in one day, so if somebody does you wrong seven times in one day, and they want to be forgiven after each one of those times, Jesus said, you got to forgive them, right? And so now Peter's asking Jesus, Lord, should I forgive them only seven times? Is, is that where it stops? You get seven chances and that's it? And this is what Jesus says in verse 22. He says, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 to- 77 times. And so what does that mean? 77, it, it's not, you give them 77 chances, it means don't keep track. Right? Always leave yourself open for what God wants to do in somebody's life. Always leave yourself open to restore your brother. Right? And, and this is the example Jesus gives to his disciples in verses 23 and following, he says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And so his servants, the king's servants, owed him money, right? And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. After this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, Be patient with me. I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the servant, then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant. He said, I canceled all that, all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And this picture right here is exactly what God does for us, right? He shows us grace by not giving us what we deserve. We owe this huge debt that only Jesus can pay by dying on the cross for our sins. And when you accept that, your reward is going to heaven, giving, we don't deserve heaven, we don't deserve a relationship with God, but because of what Jesus did, God gives us that, right? That's the servant didn't deserve the king's forgiveness, 
but the king saw that he couldn't pay, so he washed it away. He said, I will take care of that for you. Don't even worry about it. The king didn't think twice about it. He said, I'm going to spare everything that you own. I'm going to take care of your debt for you. As simple as that, right? Again, in verses, chapter 18, verses 26 to 27, the serp. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. He took the debt the servant couldn't pay and forgave it. And Jesus does the same with our sin. The debt that we couldn't pay, he took on himself by dying for us. And when you accept his forgiveness and accept his sacrifice on the cross... Like I said, you receive a relationship with God and a free ticket to heaven. Not that, it's not free actually. A paid for ticket to heaven that you couldn't pay for. But also, you know, again, the master showed his servant mercy. I don't have these uh, verses up here, so it's okay. But verses 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 25 says, since he was not able to pay the master, pay the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had, he had be sold to repay the debt. And so what did this guy deserve? He should have been thrown in jail. His whole family was going to be taken away from him and everything that he owned was going to be sold. Yeah. And I don't know how long it would have taken to repay 10,000 bags of gold. I can't imagine it would be a short-term thing. It seems like a ginormous debt to me. But you understand that Jesus does the same thing for us. When he died on the cross, he, he paid for the penalty of our sin. He took the punishment that he was not deserving of because he was perfect. And he took it upon himself the punishment that we deserve. And so you know what mercy is? It's God holding back what we really do deserve. He says, you do this, and this is the consequence of your action, right? Doesn't doesn't mean that God saves us from the consequences or from our choices. But it does mean that because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, if we accept that, If we ask for that relationship with God, we're saved from hell. And you know what? Sometimes when we do make mistakes, God will rescue us. He doesn't always save us from the consequences of our actions, but a lot of times, you know, God does show us mercy and withhold what we what we do deserve. Because He is gracious and He is merciful. And, like I said, the last thing, forgiveness. In verse 27, the master, this is what the master did. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Because the servant pled with the master for forgiveness, he was gracious and merciful, gave him what he didn't deserve, he withheld what he did deserve, he canceled his debt, He didn't send him to jail. He didn't take his family and everything he owned and sell it. But he canceled his debt. And that's what Jesus does for us too. He cancels our debt. The Bible says he forgets our sins as far as the east is from the west. And God expects us to do the same for others. Like I said, not not to let people just treat you however, however they want you however they want to treat you, it doesn't mean just be a pushover. It means stand on what God says, but always always leave the door open for somebody to come back to God. Because you understand, we're his children. We represent God. And sometimes those people who God wants you to forgive, he wants to use you to represent them, 
represent him in their lives. When, when you show that grace and that mercy, when you show that you're open to forgiveness, they, they can't understand it, right? And just like Jesus never holds our sin against us, but every time we ask him to forgive us, he does, right? The Bible says if we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. So what does that mean? He always will forgive us. He has the power to forgive us. And it's always, it's always open for us freely. And this is what Jesus says to his disciples in Luke chapter 17, verses 3 to 4. He says, So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, seven times and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Right? And so, again, let's let's read verse 3 again. He says, So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, if they do something wrong against you, rebuke them. Right? Correct them, show them, hey, talk to them, have a discussion with them. Because that, that could be the hardest thing, too, in showing God's kindness and, and showing kindness. is, Hey, you understand that you, you hurt my feelings? You understand you, you did me wrong right here? You understand that, you know, because you did this, I, I'm feeling this kind of way towards you? And God says, if they ask for your forgiveness, if they realize what they did was wrong and they want your forgiveness, God says, forgive them. And that doesn't mean holding, it doesn't mean saying, oh, okay, I guess, you know, like when you were younger and your, your parents told you to say sorry or accept your brother or sister's apology when, and you're still mad at them, right? You know, like, it's okay, fine, it's fine, right? No, God doesn't want you to hold their sin, hold their sin against them, right? doesn't mean that you have to be best friends with them. doesn't mean that you have to hang out all the time. But you know what it does mean? That you still got to show them kindness. You still got to love on them no matter what they've done to you. No matter how they've treated you in the past. If, you're, if someone's looking for forgiveness, who are we to withhold it from them? Because like I said, never, God never withholds from us. And we sin all the time. Whether it's in our attitudes whether it's, you know, leaving God out of certain situations in our life, whether you freak out on somebody in traffic, you you tell a little white lie to get your way, or you have some bad thoughts towards somebody, God forgives it all. And that's just a few of the things that we do throughout the day that could happen throughout our day. Now, you might be thinking that someone... What, what if somebody is just continuously rude? They just always, you might be the nicest person in the world to them, and they just continue to treat you like trash. They never give you respect. Always being a pain in your life. Well, Jesus says that he even wants you to be kind to that person. Jesus commands us to even love our enemies doesn't mean we have to be friends or hang out with them, like I said. But we do have to show them kindness no matter what. Because you understand, we were one time enemies of God. Before you give your life to Jesus, you understand that you are God's enemy because of the sin in your life. That your sin blocks you from God, and you can't have a relationship with God. So therefore, you are God's enemy, right? The Bible says the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, right? And so our sin blocks us from God, and without Jesus' forgiveness, we're enemies of God. And even while we're enemies of God, he still loved us and still sent Jesus to die for us. He knew all the things we were going to do. He knew all the things we would say, all the things that would happen in our life. He knew how long it would take us to want a relationship with him. And he still did it anyway, despite what he knew was going to happen. Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48 says, You have heard it said, 
you have heard that it was said, love your enemy and or love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and send, sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's easy to love the people that love you. It's easy to be friendly with the people who think how we do. It's easy to be kind to those who are kind to us. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the natural thing to do. But when we do that, when we only love those who think like us, who, who like us and, you know, share the same views as we do, Jesus says we look like the rest of the world. He says, so that person that you can't stand at work, you got to love them. That person you go to school with that thinks differently than you or might always make fun of you, you got to love them. You have to be kind to them. It doesn't mean you have to agree with the things they do. And God doesn't want us to agree with the people of this world. He doesn't want us to think like other people think. He wants us to understand that lost people are lost and they're going to act lost. They're going to act like they don't know Jesus. And you know what? God's people sometimes are going to act like they don't know Jesus. And they're going to need grace, mercy, and forgiveness. They're going to need us to show God's kindness through whatever mess they're going through. They don't know. They don't know why they're even acting the way they're acting. The people who don't know Jesus, why, why would we expect them to act like Jesus? Why would we expect them to act like Christians? We don't even live up to God's expectations, and yet we expect lost people who don't believe in God to do the same. We expect them to live great and perfect lives, right? When, when we don't even live up to God's standard. That's why Jesus had to die for us. Because we can never live up to God's standards. It doesn't mean you can't have a right relationship with God. It just means that you're never going to be perfect like Jesus, right? Because he's the standard. Not me or Pastor Randy or Pastor Joe or Pastor John or, or that really strong Christian you know in your life. It doesn't make any sense to expect that out of people. And you know what? And it doesn't make any sense for us to hold grudges or judge others when they do act like that, even if they are Christians. Because you know what? When we don't show forgiveness, when we don't continue to show kindness, you know who it affects most of all? Us. And then we start asking things like this. We start thinking, you know, but why do I have to go over the top all the time? Why do I always got to be the person to, to show love when this person never wants to love me? When this never is, the person's never kind to me? When, you know, when will these people start to change? When they see the Jesus in you. When they see that we, as God's people, love them no matter what. No matter what they got going on in their lives. No matter what they're doing to us. When they see our kindness doesn't depend on us agreeing with them or not. Again, doesn't mean that we change what we believe about God. It means we love them where they're at. And that's a, that's a tall order. That's a hard thing to do. When they see that no matter what, we will be who God wants us to be. Because they desire what we have and they don't even know it. They don't realize their need for Jesus. They don't realize that, that God loves them and cares about them. They don't realize that he wants a relationship with them. But when they see that genuineness in us, God opens their eyes to see that he is what they need. That their eyes become open to see how much they are loved by God because God is using us to show that kindness and show that love. 
And that is what changes their heart, the natural fruit that only comes from God. The fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So who has God brought into your life that just rubs you the wrong way? Who has been a pain, that pain in your neck, so to speak? A better question is, why are they making you feel that way? Why are you feeling the way that you're feeling? Because it's not, it's not just that they're disrespecting you. You know, that, that, is the, that is the biggest part. But you understand when that happens, you know, God's trying to do something in your heart. He's trying to say, Caleb, you know, I know this person gets on your nerves, but you understand that I brought them to your life for a purpose. So they could get on your nerves, so that you could continue to love them. These people don't believe in me. Right? They're not gonna they're gonna think a hundred percent the opposite way of you of how you think or how you want them to think. And he says that's exactly why I brought them into your life. So my love could be shown through you, right? So who is that person? Why has God brought them into your life? Because they need him. Are you gonna be kind to them no matter what though? Don't be a doormat. Don't don't be a don't be this super weak or, or shy person. Be bold in your faith. But understand who you are. Understand that, you know, without Jesus' kindness, without his mercy, grace, and forgiveness, without him dying for us, we, we wouldn't be who we are today. Because their actions don't change who you're supposed to be, a disciple of Jesus. It doesn't change what God wants to do in your life. It doesn't change your mission in life, loving God and loving people. The two most important commandments. So today, come up here and reclaim who you are. Ask God today to show you how to love that person. Come up here and pray for that person. Ask God that you would have a a strong and growing relationship with them and that you would show his love and kindness to them in a, in a way that only he can. Maybe you're here today and you need to realize how kind and loving Jesus is to you. You realize over the past month that as we've been talking about these fruits of the Spirit that you're not producing any of that fruit. You don't have love, joy, peace, kindness, patience. You're not being kind to others. If none of this is in your life, I would ask, who are you connected to, right? So we've talked about this. Jesus says, if you abide in me, if you stay connected to me, and I stay connected to you, you'll produce much fruit. But apart from me, without me, you can't do anything, right? It's the words of Jesus himself. And so if none of this is none of this fruit is showing in your life, what is your life attached to? Because it's not Jesus. Doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. But it doesn't doesn't mean that you're connected to Jesus either. Maybe you're one of God's people and, and you're not connected to Jesus right now. You need to come back and you need to have a right relationship with God or you need to get right with him right now. You can have that fresh start today. You can have that re new relationship. You can have your relationship renewed. You can leave here with a new life and a new perspective on God. You can realize today that he loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you and take the penalty that you deserve, which is dying on the cross for your sins. That he loved you so much that he took our punishment on himself because he loved us and he didn't even put up a fight. The Bible says that he could have called down an army of angels to stop the crucifixion. That he never had to be arrested in the first place. And God, God never had to even send Jesus as a baby. He could have came up with a totally different plan because he's God and that's who he is. But he willingly sent himself, he sent his son to die for us.
school is perfect. So where are you at today? Because God, he, he wants a relationship with you. He wants you to s- display him for his power and glory. He wants to show you how much he loves you and how kind he wants to be to you so you can show that to others. So wherever you're at today, would you come and pray with me? Come accept this free gift. Come receive God's love and kindness. Come receive a new relationship with God. Would you guys come?